please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good afternoon, you're with us here on a fresh new edition of Midcap Radar. Uh, no relief as far as markets are uh, concerned. 68 points lower on the Nifty, 10,180 is where we stand. Uh, as uh, we've been pointing out now for the last couple of hours, the market's been the market's lost about a thousand odd points roughly from its all-time high uh, in late, uh, I mean essentially late last month. Dow futures have recovered a little bit, just a little bit, and maybe that will have an impact on Europe uh, as well. Dow futures are down about 300 points at one point earlier today. We're down about 400, but it's been swinging 100 points, uh, but still down 300. I think Europe is opening as well, and we'll uh, turn our attention to these markets. With me is uh, Sonia. Sonia, hi. Hi. Uh, yes, the mid-cap uh, end of the market is just getting butchered, right? I mean, day after day. Look at the sell-off today. Almost 300 points now gone on the mid-cap index, and the Nifty Junior as well is reeling under pressure. So it looks like the, the mid-cap stocks went up by stairs last year and they're just coming down using the elevator. Super fast elevator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually looking uh, uh, pretty bad. But the uh, fact is that, uh, you know, there is some recovery in stocks uh, per se. I mean, looking at the big beaten down names, you look at, you know, maybe a, 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 a PNB. I mean, PNB got to about, what, uh, 93 and a half. It's at about 95. You look at, uh, now this is far and few in between, uh, I know, but at least I think the silver lining for today is that we're not selling off more. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll turn into another one of those uh, really bad sessions like yesterday. I mean, yesterday, yeah. for example, if you had to summarize the full day of session, you just had to wrap up the last one hour because that's yeah. where all the action was. That's but today it's been slow and steady uh, and... Uh, We'll see another. Maybe we'll get. We'll see another move, uh, swift move. But so far, it's not selling off more. So let's hold. I mean, the point, Sonia, also is that we can take the lift down, escalate it yeah. down. But at some point, it'll, it'll it'll have to have to stop at one. I mean, some floor, right? It yeah. can't keep going in perpetuity, the same pace. Pace is the point. Yeah, that's uh, what uh, Sudarshan Sukhani was saying actually a while back. He was saying that, you know, perhaps at this juncture, you can safely say that there is a bottom, but I mean, that's for a technical expert to call it. Or it's bottom, hard, I don't yeah, know, it's maybe, hard for yeah. us to say that. But I take your point about the mid-caps that are, there are some mid-caps that are looking good because even in this market, in a falling market, there are stocks like, you know, Vmart Retail, we were pointing that out, uh, and names like Team Lease, etc. that are looking pretty good. So I take your point entirely that there's buying even in this market. But Let's take our viewers through all the top headlines and then we will take the show forward. Global weakness has hit the Lal Street as the key indices have slipped over half a percent each. Midcaps have taken a much bigger knock with the index down more than one and a half, okay, about one and a half percent right now. Asian markets are trading lower on choppy trade as trade fears return after White House Chief Economic Advisor Gary Cohn's resignation. And banking space reels under pressure yet again with the Nifty PSU bank down over 3% uh, while the Nifty bank loses 1%. Credit Suisse came out with a report saying that large treasury losses of almost 20,000 crores are likely in Q4. Well, Telugu Desam Party, the TDP, looks at the option of withdrawing from the NDA after they remain unconvinced by the government's assurances on special status for Andhra Pradesh. Sources tell CNBC TV18 that, Chand that Chandrababu Naidu will convene a meet on uh, the alliance in Amravati. Okay, so those are the top stories and we'll touch base on some of those in a bit. Ashwini is with us as always uh, to tell us what's going to happen, what's likely to happen. Ashwini, thanks very much. Uh, and uh, 70 points on the Nifty, uh, your sense. See, I think on the Nifty we have tested 10,150, 170. So uh, there is strong support out there. So uh, there is, uh, you know, short covering which is visible. So, in fact, uh, from here, for the next couple of hours, a long trade won't be such a bad thing with a 10,150 stop. We could actually gain 30, 40 points on the Nifty and maybe 100 odd on the Bank Nifty because yesterday what happened in the last hour, that happened today in the first two or three hours. So, beyond a point, you can't, you know, keep selling into a market. So, my sense is that uh, from here, if you buy, Chances are, uh, you know, if uh, FIs don't come back very strongly, uh, you're likely to see a 30, 40 point uh, type of gain. Having said that, uh, what you need to do is uh, uh, buy into an NIT tech with a stop at about uh, 860, target of 885. Britannia is a buy with a stop of 4850, target of 5000. 
Godrej consumer is a buy with a stop of 1080, target of 1140. I won't mind buying even into these bashed up ICICI Bank and State Bank because these guys are now getting very close to strong supports. So even they will bounce back a little bit. So uh, all of the uh, big private banks are likely to participate in whatever bounce we get. Okay. All right, uh, Ashwini, thanks for that. Uh, we got your stock calls as well uh, in IT Tech, etc. We'll do one thing. We'll come back to you in a bit. Uh, for now, let's get Devin Choksi of KR Choksi Securities into the discussion. Devin, hi. Afternoon. Uh, so far, amidst you know all this chaos, it's still less than a 10% fall that the market has seen. Do you think this is still a routine bull market correction? Or uh, is there now some fear of this being even a bear market phase, the start of a bear market phase? Yeah, good afternoon, Sonia. Well, I don't think it's a bear market phase, and I would definitely say that it is a correction. Now, currently, I think the pattern which is happening in the market is uh, that some amount of open interest is getting built up after the expiry of last month's contract. And if you systematically start looking into it, I think, has it happening because of, or is it happening because of, uh, the uh, Singapore Nifty's position getting shifted out to India, there could be an element of answer yes into this. We'll get the data to validate this particular assumption because as of now, we are only seeing some trades which are happening in that direction. So if the open interest gets shifted out of SGX Nifty and coming into India, then probably I think you are likely to see the market building higher amount of open interest compared to its previous past, where I think it used to carry a little smaller open interest. So that is one thing which is going to keep the market busy and I think it could remain a little volatile also at the same time. And that's where I think you can argue that the rhythm of the market is not coming under the grip of the market players. Maybe we'll have to wait and see. But this appears to be more of a technical uh, correction vis-a-vis -vis anything to do with the fundamentals of the business. Fundamentals of the business for the first time, I think we had a conviction that it's going to grow faster than what we have all thought about. Earnings are likely to grow faster than what we have all thought about this one. Uh -huh. uh, Devin, uh, this entire uh, LTCG uh, issue, you know, the first nine months of uh, the financial year, generally people made money, markets were doing very well. Uh, so is there also an element of, uh, you know, booking losses uh, to lower your, uh, uh, you know, uh, gains on which you would have to pay tax? I mean, that element also? Uh, well, Prashant, I have a little uh, analysis on this particular subject. If you go by what finance minister said, that out of the total exempted capital gains uh, in the last year, about 90-95% is coming through the corporates and the corporate entities and balance coming from the individual people. So corporate and corporate entities are any case, I think, governed under MAT. So assuming that I think they have claimed on one side the equities under the no tax, but on the other side, I think because of the entities, they have paid MAT. So that means that the government has already collected the tax by way of a MAT tax into the corporate taxation. Now, taking the credit of 20,000 crore in the books for this financial year, as far as I think LTCG is concerned, that itself I think is, a aggressive, is an aggressive assumption it looks like. Because for 20,000 crore worth of LTCG gain, uh, you will require 2 lakh crore worth of profit to come in. And for 2 lakh crore profit to come in, market cap has to go up, I think, commensurately that much higher or maybe more. In such kind of a situation, I think I feel that I think this entire LTCG saga is not going to live, live, live long. I think at this point of time, I believe that not many investors are churning the portfolio because of this issue. So definitely, I think there is a good amount of assumption that the government has built, which is unlikely to prove them right on this subject. <clears throat> okay, fair enough. So that's on the LTCG issue. But you know, like you mentioned, uh, after a long time, we're expecting to see earnings upgrades come in as well. The earnings picture has improved. So if one wanted to look at opportunities now in the market to buy for the long term, Devin, what stocks or rather what pockets would you be recommending? So, Sony, I think the auto remains a very comfortable play for us, you know, because commercial vehicle segment is going to experience higher amount of growth because of the uh, scrappage policy coming into play. Similarly, the auto ancillaries work applying to this auto majors, be it four-wheeler passengers, uh, two-wheelers, or the commercial vehicles farm segment. I think these companies are, I think, really in a sweet spot at this point of time. So, in a way, I think there is a relatively less amount of risk in this business currently. 
second thing i think some of the pharma company looks interestingly positioned and according to me i think with the shift happening from the pure generic to branded generic and now into the specialty the pharma products i guess i think some of the pharma companies would have good time in the financial year 18 19 and more in 1920 there after so selectively the pockets are available to invest even in the finance business also uh, some of the housing finance companies i would remain bullish on from the investment perspective Okay, Devin, thanks a lot for stopping by and giving us your quick thoughts on the market. So, this is perhaps a good time to be investing for the longer term. Of course, in the very near term, there are plenty of pressure points. Let's do one thing. Let's take a short break on the market. It's still status quo for now. Up next, we'll get you some important corporate commentary, some market views as well. Do stay tuned in. You're still watching Mid Cap Radar on CNBC TV 18. Let's talk about some stocks now. Tala Motors, that stock hit a 52-week low today. It has been under intense pressure over the last many weeks and months. The management has spoken about Donald Trump's tweets on the possibility of trade tariffs on European cars, trade tariffs on steel, and the impact that it could have on the company and the sector. They also spoke about growth possibilities in the domestic market. Here's more from the MD and CEO of the company. This announcement uh, is a relative uh, fresh one. Uh, we are still in the process uh, to identify what the potential impact could be. Uh, the impact is certainly going to be twofold. On the one hand side, it could impact uh, the raw material side. Uh, as far as steel imports, uh, for example, are concerned, uh, which could have uh, a major impact not only on India, but I think on the steel market uh, globally. Uh, which could uh, really uh, change uh, all of our previously taken assumption for the upcoming fiscal year to a large extent. Uh, but it's, it's still too early in order to, to draw a final conclusion uh, what it uh, could effectively mean or what it is going to mean. Uh, so therefore, we are very carefully monitoring the further developments. Okay, 59 points uh, still lower on the Nifty. I mean, one name which is seeing a bit of pullback is uh, UPL, uh, that is United Phosphorus, if we can have that up. Uh, it got to 694. It's at about 710 rupees now, 14, 15 rupee uh, jump. I think you're seeing that sharp spike uh, coming in right now. Okay, uh, but uh, very little else seems to be uh, recovering. Maybe an interglobe, it's at, I mean, the low was 1256. It's back at about 1280 or, uh, or so. Uh, I can't really spot uh, very much else. Otherwise, things are actually quite uh, deep in the red. Post the Nero Modi uh, sc uh, scam scandal, bankers have become reluctant to uh, fund the gems and jewelry sector segment. Uh, LOUs have been hard to come. They've been put on hold. We spoke with the CFOs of uh, Titan. Uh, Mr. S. Subramaniam joined us to understand the fallout of the sc uh, scam, there is also expectation that organized players like Titan can actually benefit. Listen in uh, to his comments. What we expect to happen is far uh, level of scrutiny, greater level of scrutiny on all uh, lending to the jewelry sector. I won't be surprised if that happens. Uh, uh, need for more collateral as, is something which may also be happening at this point. Um, so that would tighten, uh, and then uh, on top of that, you have also now the new regulation which is coming up, which is the banning of unregulated deposit schemes, uh, which will take out a lot of working capital, which a lot of uh, small jewelers who have uh, been taking deposits from public without any regulatory oversight uh, also may have to stop. Um, so uh, I think a squeeze of working capital is therefore quite likely in the, in the industry. Uh, and it might uh, quite force uh, quite a few of the players to, to, to go out of the industry. Okay, that's uh, the management of Titan talking about the ramifications that the scam will have on the industry. But banks continue to be under pressure. Earlier this morning, we spoke to Arvind Sanger, the managing partner at Geosphere Capital Management, who said that frauds in the banking space is the, the main reason for the fall in the Indian markets, though overall he remains fundamentally optimistic on India. Take a look. 
the bank situation and uh, you know uh, that seems to have become uh, the anchor that is driving the market lower i think if the risk is that the broader market is going to remain challenged and could go down then uh, some of the safer bets uh, could be some of the large caps which will get sold off less because either the valuations are less stretched or there is less hot money to come out in those names. So the Indian uh, earnings recovery uh, and the economic recovery seems to be uh, finally starting to move in the right direction with all of the challenges of the last 12 to 15 months now in the rearview mirror. I think we're you know, fundamentally more optimistic uh, about India, including uh, the bad loan situation, but the political situation in India also, you know, notwithstanding the Northeast uh, results, uh, is going to be challenging this year because of uh, concerns about, uh, uh, you know, what the tea leaves are reading for uh, the 2019 Lok Sabha election. So I think those are some of the reasons why the markets are probably, even in India, not likely to see any kind of a V-shaped recovery and likely to remain somewhat range bound. Okay, so slightly circumspect on the Indian markets. He expects range bound movement and just no V shaped recovery in the near future. We'll take a short break. We'll come back with more on the market and stock specific action. Stay with us. Hi, welcome back to Midcap Radar. Well, we've been talking about a lot of midcap stocks that are, that have had it good today, despite the kind of downtick in the market. Team Lees is one of them. It's not had a good year so far, with the counter losing 15% in the first two months. But today, it's a stock that's rallied 7%. Uh, it's come off intraday. Motilal Oswal has been bullish on the staffing sector, the specialized staffing sector, and they see a 29% upside to the stock going forward. We, in fact, posed that question to N. Ravi Vishwanath, the CFO of the company about their staffing business and they said that they expect to see almost 20 to 25 percent growth as far as IT staffing is concerned. Listen in. In the case of IT companies, uh, telecom players, uh, healthcare industry, uh, engineering services, hospitality, so these are all some of the areas which are uh, where, where, the, where the margins are much better than what we see uh, in the general staffing business. Uh, so it's essentially with this in mind that we said that we would be getting into specialized staffing. The IT staffing business has gross margins upwards of 20% and net margins of uh, between 12 between 12 and 14%. Over the next couple of years, uh, I think, you know, given that we are starting off a low base in IT staffing, we probably hope to see, uh, you know, upwards of about 20-25% growth uh, in the IT staffing business. Okay, very optimistic there, the management of Team Lee's. But uh, we end on an optimistic note as well. The Dow futures have recovered almost 200 points from the lows. So let's see. It's very, very volatile, but the last hour of trade will take all of that forward. Thanks for watching.